tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There is a divine plan for all of us. If it was true that sin keeps God apart and separated from you like they teach you in the churches, then none of us would have a chance. When you realize that God is so much a part of you, if he has forsaken you, he has forsaken himself, because this is so hard sometimes to have proper expression to express, but in the truest sense of the word, you are God manifested in the flesh. The source of all that is dispensed himself into all of humanity. I can say that everything that God is, all of his essence, all of his beauty, all of his loveliness, everything that God is I am. That is the gospel. And that is the gospel of grace. When this revelation comes upon you, it puts such an overwhelming love deep within you so that you don't look anymore at what you see with the physical eyes. You understand that everything you see with the physical eyes is really a lie in the sense that it's not eternal it is temporal. And Paul says that is why we don't look at the things that are seen, for they are temporal. But we look at the eternal. The things that never change. Do you know what never changes about you? Your true nature, the new creation on the inside of you. That will never change. But you see, what I see of you with my physical eyes, that is subject to change, and that will change. If you understand that God is not condemning you, no matter how you live. God is love and is the only one who truly, unconditionally loves you without reservation. It is very hard when you are caught up in some of these lusts of the flesh to really understand that God loves you. Anyway and the only way that you will ever be delivered is by the increase of His Spirit within you. Because even if you change your outward behavior and you abstain from all the bad habits that is all well and good, but you are no different in the sight of God. You are no different, because if you remember that tree in the garden that all of us were supposed to stay away from, was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What does that mean? We look at something and we say. That is evil. And then we look at something else and say. Oh that is good. You see, that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's not about a literal tree in a garden. In the middle of the garden there were two trees. It is not about somebody taking the fruit of a tree and eating it. Paul told the Corinthians, he said. You are God's husbandry. The word, husbandry is an old English word that means ground, a place to grow things. Man was created from the dust of the earth so in the middle of your ground. There is the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The physical body was created from the dust of the earth. So in your garden, there are two trees and you have to make the same choice that Adam and Eve did. We all make that same choice. You have two trees to live by. You can live in the very deepest recesses of your being where there is life and it is God's life. Also in the middle of your garden is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If we can get Christians to see that the root cause of everything in the world that is rebellious, sinful or negative is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You see, God said to Adam, who told you that you were naked? Before that happened evidently Adam and Eve were naked, but it was no problem. Who told us it was wrong to take a drink? Who told us it was wrong to do anything? Who told us we were sinners? Not God but our preachers and religious leaders. The sin issue has been dealt with. What we need now is to live by life. Light and love. Gary Sigler's website is sigler.org.